Hello everyone, so this video is another one for Nearest Toolbox, uh, or Brain Analyzer as it's now called. Uh, this is specifically going to cover the data class. So in the toolbox it's going to be object oriented, which means that you will actually create, either there are built-in classes that you can utilize and create in manners uh, to manipulate them accordingly to the, to the toolbox. So the first one we'll cover is the data class. Um, the data class is very specific to actually how you load the data. So if you load the data and you select the data, uh, the file path, specifically down to the, the, the single data set, you will have one data class within your data class, or I will call it subclass within your class. Uh, if you, however, don't designate the file path specifically to one data set, but you actually back it out and you go to, say, a group level where you have many subjects or many sessions or something like that, uh, you'll actually have subclasses within this. So in this case, I had six sessions within this group. Uh, six, let's say six, yeah, we'll say six sessions. So each one of these actually has its own um, uh, properties and methods that you can call on it. So specifically, they have a description, which is just going to be the file path. It has the actual data, uh, which is going to be time points times the channels times two, actually, which I left that out, which I'll explain later. It has a probe object or a probe uh, 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 structure. It has a time variable, an FM variable, an auxiliary uh, variable, stimulus variable, and a demographics variable, as well as an FS or sampling frequency variable. So once, if I were to open one of these uh, single data sets, it would look something like this. So here you see the description, which again is the file path. I have my data set. I have my probe, which is kind of something of an object or a structure or something along those lines. I have time, which is simply a time vector. Uh, I have FM, which stands for frequency modulated. It's if, it's if you're using a frequency modulated system. Uh, you have an auxiliary uh, variables, which come in the form of a dictionary, uh, basically keys and values, which we'll cover. Uh, stimulus, demographics, and again, sampling rate, or FS. So the description is literally the file path name. So you'll see here, this is one of uh, my data sets. It goes down to the .nearest file. So remember, each one of these data structures will have within it uh, a specific t uh, information specific to it. So uh, regardless of where you set the path, it will narrow down to the uh, file itself for every single data set. Uh, the data itself uh, is going to be, it's a data variable, and it looks like this in the corner. So it's actually going to be just rows and columns in a matrix. It's raw data. Uh, it will be time points as the rows, so you have plenty of rows, usually thousands of rows, and the columns will be the opto channels times two. It's times two because it's per wavelength, because it's raw data. And that channel format for the raw data will be listed in the probe file. So the probe file contains uh, the optodes, which has all every single source and detector with the X, X, Y, Z coordinates. Sorry, I spelled coordinates wrong. Uh, and its units. It will have a link, which is basically the list of source and detector combinations that are designated as a channel. And they alternate as uh, for both wavelengths. So it starts wavelength one, then wavelength two. If you follow this list, it will actually transfer back over to the data column format. Uh, you also have the distances that are calculated between source and detectors. It should be in the following wavelengths that are listed, or excuse me, the units that are listed in the optodes uh, level. It has the actual X and y's, X, Y, Z coordinates of all the sources as well as all the detectors. In the time uh, variable, it's a simple one-dimensional time vector. So it has the exact number of points as your data sets has samples. And every single row is essentially a sample point, and it's in frames. Uh, FM is, again, if it's frequency modulated. Uh, I don't have this, in, so unfortunately I'm a little bit unfamiliar, but it's, it's just a simple integer variable from what I, what I gather. Auxiliary data is if you want to include anything like heart rate, uh, respiratory, uh, respiratory belt information, or any EEG data, or anything like that, you can throw that in. Honestly, if it was EEG data, you may be running a separate uh, aspect, but you can throw in different sorts of variables. And again, this is going to be in a dictionary format. Dictionary format being keys, which are names, so they would be basically the specific auxiliary variables you're using, and the values themselves, which tie into one another. 
So we also have the stimulus variable. Stimulus variable, again, will be a dictionary format with keys and values. The keys will be your conditions in this case, and the values will be the onsets of those, um, of those conditions. Uh, that would, that those can be, all of these can be manipulated later using different uh, built-in functions in the toolbox. And finally, you have demographics. Uh, the demographics, excuse me, we have one more after demographics. Uh, but demographics are going to be uh, uh, based on the fol folder hierarchy that you input. So in, our, uh, in the example I gave with the load directory um, uh, folder, you actually have a, uh, we marked it as group and subject, which is actually by default what you would go to. Uh, make sure, so this, this will actually steal from that and it will designate, designate values based on that. So it, it looks at wherever you selected the, um, the root folder, it will guess that the remaining folders are going to be in the order of group and subject. Um, if you designate the file path incorrectly or you named it incorrectly, definitely go back, alter the group and subject names to match whatever names you have something like subject and session instead of group and subject, or even group, subject, session, something like that. So make sure that those do match. Uh, the last variable, which I don't have a mention, is simply it's the FS variable, which I'll track back up here. Oh, here it is. So it's just going to be sampling uh, frequency, which is just an integer, integer and it's taken origi from the original file. Um, if you want to alter this, you can uh, do either a... Um, you can do a resampling or you can actually alter it manually uh, or, or through code later on, but it will be taken directly from the file if it's available. Anyway, that is the entirety of the data class. Um, I will go through the remaining classes in other videos and each of the functions here and there as, as, as time permits, permits. I hope that was helpful.